When journeying down the west coast, a slight detour to the Shark Bay Peninsula brings a traveller to Monkey Mire. Why the funny name? Well, popular theory is that it was named after the visiting schooner Monkey, with the Mire being the Aboriginal word for house or home. There are other theories about the name, but this does not matter to the small group of dolphins who make up their first port of call every morning. They drop in around 8.30 to be greeted by an eager crowd of onlookers who have braved the early morning chill to be part of this unique wildlife experience. Members of the crowd are selected to give them one fish each. This is to encourage them to seek the rest of their daily needs in the wild. I think somehow that the little fish handout is not the only reason for their daily appearance. It seems to me that they enjoy putting on a display for the humans. As Monkey Mai is a national park, there are lots of wildflowers blooming. Travelling down the peninsula, we join the main highway for a while and then leave it again to travel to the coastal village of Calvary. This is a place of beautiful rugged coastal scenery. Despite the windy conditions, wildflowers have adapted to cope with the excessive salt content in the air. The spring with all its wildflowers means more activity in the wildlife world and here they don't have far to travel for just a short distance inland is the huge Kalbari National Park where wildflowers abound in all their glory in various shapes, sizes and colours. The colours of Kalbari are not confined to the flowers, however, for within the National Park is a series of spectacular gorges where erosion of the sandstone layers has left behind a rather colourful landscape.
The Murchison River winds through the gorges to enter the sea at Kalbari. This particular piece is known as Nature's Window. Kalbari gets its name from the Kalba, which is the seed of this native pear. And no visit to Kalbari would be complete without mentioning this white grevillea, which is called smelly socks. Why? Well, take a guess. And another unusual flower, lamb's wool, which does have the texture of fine wool to touch. If you think these flowers are a little strange, our next stop will offer you something stranger. It is at Geraldton that we turn away from the coastal road and journey inland, but not before grabbing a shot of the St Francis Xavier Cathedral designed by architect priest John Hawes. It is the quest for the reed flowers that brings us to this small part of the world and luck is with us and a few other fellow travellers as well, for the reef flowers are in full bloom and at their best. And when we all climb down from our various means of transport, we are confronted by one of the true wonders of nature, the reef flowers themselves. with many of them forming almost perfect circles as they spread themselves around their spiky pine-like green centre, it's not difficult to see how they receive their common name. Their botanical name, however, is best left alone without any attempt being made at its pronunciation. They are quite unique and grow only in this small corner of the world. Officially they are classified as prostrate perennial herbs that grow annually from rootstock and will only appear in an area when conditions are ripe. Which means that should we visit this site next year, they will in all probability not be here. Which brings to mind the saying that beauty is always heightened when a touch of mystery is added. Around the area, many other wildflowers are in bloom. We again join the travellers on the roads and this time we head for the small town of Hyden to see another of nature's wonders, Wave Rock. The rock is 15 metres high and 100 metres long and is the surface perfect wave frozen in time. The runoff from the rock creates an environment that supports a varied array of wildflowers. But it is these beautiful cowslip orchids that are the most striking. And while on the subject of orchids, we decide to attempt to find two of WA's most exotic orchids, the spider orchid and the enamel orchid. Both are found in the Esperance area in the south, and this is where we decide to head for. With the occasional stop along the way for more unusual wildflowers, Once at the coast, we search the scrub and lo and behold, we do find some spider orchids. And after crawling through more scrub, we locate a striking enamel orchid that changes colour with different lighting that highlights its shiny enamel-like surface.
Well, that's it, folks. It's time to head for Nullarbor and home. What you have seen is but a small fraction of Western Australia's wildflowers. Maybe we will go back and get the rest another day.